another day another story chapter 3 power of courts section 26 of criminal procedure code courts by which offenses are triable subject to the other provisions of this code a uh, any offense under the indian penal code 45 of 1860 may be tried by i the high court or e the court of session or e any other court by which such offense is shown in the first schedule to be triable one provided that any two offense under section 376 section 376 a section 376 b section 376 c section 376 d or section 376 e of the indian penal code 45 of 1860 shall be tried as far as practicable by a court presided over by a woman b any offence under any other law shall, when any court is mentioned in this behalf in such law, be tried by such court and when no court is so mentioned, may be tried by, i, the high court, or, e, any other court by which such offence is shown in the first schedule to be triable. Section 27 of Criminal Procedure Code Jurisdiction in the case of juveniles, any offence not punishable with death or imprisonment for life, committed by any person who at the date when he appears or is brought before the court is under the age of 16 years, may be tried by the court of a chief judicial magistrate, or by any court specially empowered under the Children Act, 1960, 60 of 1960, or any other law for the time being in force providing for the treatment, training and rehabilitation of youthful offenders. Section 28 of Criminal Procedure Code. Sentences which high courts and sessions judges may pass, 1. A high court may pass any sentence authorized by law. 2. A sessions judge or additional sessions judge may pass any sentence authorized by law, but any sentence of death passed by any such judge shall be subject to confirmation by the high court. 3. An assistant sessions judge may pass any sentence authorized by law except a sentence of death or of imprisonment for life or of imprisonment for a term exceeding 10 years. Section 29 of Criminal Procedure Code sentences which magistrates may pass 1. the court of a chief judicial magistrate may pass any sentence authorized by law except a sentence of death or of imprisonment for life or of imprisonment for a term exceeding seven years 2. the court of a magistrate of the first class may pass a sentence of imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years or a fine not exceeding one ten thousand rupees or of both 3. The Court of Magistrate of the Second Class may pass a sentence of imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year, or a fine not exceeding two, five thousand rupees, or of both. 4. The Court of a Chief Metropolitan Magistrate shall have the powers of the Court of a Chief Judicial Magistrate and that of a Metropolitan Magistrate, the powers of the Court of a Magistrate of the First Class. Section 30 of Criminal Procedure Code. Sentence of Imprisonment in Default of Fine. 1. The court of a magistrate may award such term of imprisonment in default of payment of fine as is authorized by law, provided that the term, a, is not in excess of the powers of the magistrate under section 29, b, shall not, where imprisonment has been awarded as part of the substantive sentence, exceed one-fourth of the term of imprisonment which the magistrate is competent to inflict as punishment for the offense otherwise than as imprisonment in default of payment of the fine. 2. The imprisonment awarded under this section may be in addition to a substantive sentence of imprisonment for the maximum term awardable by the magistrate under Section 29. Section 31 of Criminal Procedure Code. Sentence in cases of conviction of several offenses at one trial. 1. When a person is convicted at one trial of two or more offenses, the court may, subject to the provisions of Section 71 of the Indian Penal Code, 45 of 1860, sentence him for such offenses, to the several punishments prescribed therefore which such court is competent to inflict, such punishments when consisting of imprisonment to commence the one after the expiration of the other in such order as the court may direct, unless the court directs that such punishments shall run concurrently. 2. In the case of consecutive sentences, it shall not be necessary for the court by reason only of the aggregate punishment for the several offenses being in excess of the punishment which it is competent to inflict on conviction of a single offense, to send the offender for trial before a higher court, provided that, a, uh, in no case shall such person be sentenced to imprisonment for a longer period than 14 years, b, the aggregate punishment shall not exceed twice the amount of punishment which the court is competent to inflict for a single offense. 3. For the purpose of appeal by a convicted person, the aggregate of the consecutive sentences passed against him under this section shall be deemed to be a single sentence.
Section 32 of Criminal Procedure Code. Mode of Conferring Powers. 1. In conferring powers under this code, the High Court or the State Government, as the case may be, may, by order, empower persons specially by name or in virtue of their offices or classes of officials generally be their official titles. 2. Every such order shall take effect from the date on which it is communicated to the person so empowered. Section 33 of Criminal Procedure Code. Powers of officers appointed. Whenever any person holding an office in the service of government who has been invested by the High Court or the State Government with any powers under this code throughout any local area is appointed to an equal or higher office of the same nature, within a like local area under the same State Government, he shall, unless the High Court or the State Government, as the case may be, otherwise directs, or has otherwise directed, exercise the same powers in the local area in which he is so appointed. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.